Hey guys, I just wanted to do a follow-up video on the book that I was asking everybody about. Um, I looked online, uh, Brother in Christ gave me the link to Wikipedia. I mean, I should have looked it up there, but I was wondering if there was anything specific. Because when I got here, it's very hard to understand. All they're just trying to do is say the good side of it. Um, but that's kind of the figure right there. But as you go down, look at the history. If we keep going down, right here is the actual image that's on mine. Or on this King James Bible. When I was reading this, it says the first examples. Let's highlight the whole thing. The first examples date to about the 9th century and occur in two groups at Athenia in Ireland and Iona, an Irish monastery of the Scottish coast. The Athenian group is a generally, I, I probably pronounced that wrong, a henny group is generally earlier. However, it's possible that St. John's Cross at Iona was the first high cross. It's Catholic. Okay, they say it's a Celtic cross, but when you look at stuff like this and you realize that, oh my gosh, everything's going to be pulled back under the authority of Rome. I mean, they have their hands in everything. Okay. Um, I found this other website right here, Celtic Cross Symbols, Origin Theories, Celtic Cross. Well, the obvious one is it's Catholic. It comes from the Catholic Church. Irish le legends credit St. Patrick with the Celtic Cross. Okay. The circle is added to the cross to symbolize eternal life. I'm going to get that to the top of the screen. Eternal life. Chapter and verse. In order to make the cross more structural, stable for the stone masonries to carve, the circle was added. And you look at it, come on. They could have made it without the circle. There was tons of crosses at that time without the circle. Not tons, but they were making crosses. The circle represents the pagan god of the sun. That's right there is what it's about. The circle is a symbol of eternity and represents God's, lowercase, unending love. Okay. The four arms of the cross represent direction, the points of a compass. Bring it to the top. Compass, north, south, east, and west. The elements, earth, air, fire, and water, witchcraft. Man, mind, heart, soul, and body. I have no doubt this is a pagan symbol. Anybody, like I said, it, it creeped me out, and I want to talk to the brethren about it, brothers and sisters in Christ out there. And the funny thing is, is when I typed in Catholic cross with a circle in it, guess what I found? Images. Right there. That's the image that I have on mine. Or on this Bible right here. And you look, there's all kinds of circles that they're adding to the cross, and it's Catholic. It's all Catholic. They start going into other stuff. But all this is Catholic. Okay. Uh, Presbyterian cross. It's not, that's, like I said, it's a Catholic cross. Catholic has their hands in every denomination and every religion out there, it seems. Um, we're getting closer and closer to the end. Um, so I wanted to show that to you. But the reason I'm gonna reason I'm gonna be burning this book is I almost don't want to show you guys, but there's pictures of Jesus in here. He's got the long hair, he's feminine. Um, and there's lots of pictures of Jesus in here. And I didn't really look at hardcore. There might be images of the Holy Spirit as a dove. But I wanted to look into it and say, why do people like David Daniels, excuse me, David Daniels at Chick Publications, why does he say you can make images as long as you don't bow down to them? And he says you're not to make any graven image, that means you're not to bow down and worship them. So I typed in graven 
in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, the one I have here. Next month, I'll have the book that's the uh, actual replica of the uh, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. But I couldn't find Graven in there. So when I looked around, it says Graven is past part of participle of grave. In other words, grave is something you're presently doing. Graven is something you already done, past tense. So when I typed in grave, this is what I came up with in the 1828 dictionary. Uh, symbol one, let me see if we can't get this kind of bigger. Not symbol, we just looked at the symbols. Uh, definition one, to carve or cut letters or figures on stone or other hard substance with a chisel or edge tool to engrave. You know, that has to do with stone, but today we have art where we use pencils and paint. And the example they give is, Thou shalt take two onyx stones and grave on them the names of the children of Israel, Exodus 28.9. Okay. Definition two, to carve, to form, or shape by cutting with a chisel as to grave an image. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Now where in that definition does it say worship? Graven does not mean worship. Graving is past tense. You're not to make past tense image. You're not to present, present, present tense make them either, but it's saying they're already made. You're not supposed to make them. Okay. But that Exodus 24, that's the example they give. Where's worship in there? Um, it says to carve, to form, or shape by cutting with the chisel as to grave an image. That's the definition of graven most of the time in the Bible when it's talking about making images and then worshiping them. Okay, the, Making the image doesn't mean you're worship, wor worshiping them yet. It's when you worship them. And we're going to get to a verse that says you're not to make graven image even of heaven. You're not to make graven image of Jesus, God, the Father, the Holy Spirit. You're not even supposed to make graven images of them. Well, we don't worship it doesn't matter. We'll get to that part. Uh, some of them, some of them were like, I did, I, I just didn't get the, how they're used. But to clean a ship's bottom by burning off filth, okay, grass or other foreign matter, and paying it over with pitch, kind of like Moses when he's making uh, Moses, Noah when he's making the ark, they did it with pitch. Um, Four, to entomb. That's the one we know a lot of. When you hear grave, we think of tombs and stuff that's a uh, hole dug in the ground, uh, people buried in the ground. Uh, grave, verbal interaction, to carve, to write, or delineate on hard substance, to practice engraving. Uh, number one, when it comes to noun, uh, to the ditch, like I said, when you're burying somebody, the hole, the ditch, pit, or excavation place in which a dead human body is deposited and placed for the corpse of a human being, a sepulcher, a tomb, any place where the dead are reposited, um, a place of great slaughter or more mortality. Uh, Flanders was formerly the grave of English armies. Down here, graves in a plural sediment of tallow melted. Um, graves in plural means you're going to go to the grave. Um, when people say you're going to go to the grave, they're saying they're going to die. Um, but when I say I'm going to, Jacksonville has a, an old, old graveyard. It says you're, go, you're going somewhere with multiple graves. So knowing that, let's see if I got this in order. Okay, Exodus 20. Thou shalt have no other gods, lowercase s, before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any, any graven image that's taken something and drawn on it, graving on it, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven. You're not supposed to make it about G an image of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, or God the Father. Or that is in earth beneath, 
and all the people around the Jewish people at the time were worshiping false gods uh, and they had images or that is in the water under the earth okay that's the that's a command that's the first command and number three thou shalt have no other gods before me number four thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images where's worship there it's not then the next command thou shalt not bow down thyself to them so you're not just to make them you're not to bow down to them nor serve them for I am the Lord thy God and a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me okay you're not to make them and you're not to bow down to them um, people uh, you get to the New Testament so what about the New Testament we are in Acts 17 uh, 29 for as much when as we are the offspring of God we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold meaning you're using gold to make the Godhead um, images of the Godhead uh, silver or stone graven by art you know David Daniels at Chick publication does it a lot and yes I know some other Bible believing uh, God-fearing men of God did too in the past, but we're going to keep going here. Graven by art and man's devices. Okay. It's funny how it says man's devices because we got computers today and it's a device and you can do all kinds of art on a computer. Um, man's devices, the printer, you can, you can make an image and print it out on the printer and post it places, make books. Um, and right here, number 30, at the times of this ignorance, some people don't know, they don't really take it seriously until someone just flat out confronts them like I did David Daniels at Chick Publications. Uh, and these times of this ignorance God winked at. Up above there's some other things too, but we're talking about 20, verse 29. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Now, verse 29, where does it say worshiping them? It doesn't. It says, for as much then as we are, are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is. We're not to make the Godhead something physical that we can look at and see describing what it is. Okay? And now he commandeth all men everywhere to repent. And there's a lot of us that have repented when it comes to the Trinity, um, the false lowercase g gods of the Trinity. And now with this subject, with this book, it's got me into, we're not supposed to be making images of the Godhead. And the Trinity people, they love making images of the Godhead. They show God the Father. They try to make him a little invisible, but they still show him as a body. And they show uh, Jesus as a body, a physical body. And they show the dove, the Holy Spirit, as a physical body. And they have no problem, you know, painting Jesus. It's gotten so bad we have movies out there where people are like, oh, lining up, I want to play Jesus, I want to play Jesus, I want to be Jesus. And it's like, they're really going to be answering for that at, at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. Okay, Those who worship this false trinity and won't let it go and re refuse the Godhead of the Bible, they're going to be answering for all this stuff at the great white throne judgment. Um, people who believe in the Godhead, people that are like, well, you know, it's, it's not really that big of a deal. They're going to be answering for it at the uh, throne judgment, okay? Where Christians are going to go, our work's going to be burned, we're going to have to answer for our lives as a Christian. Everything before you got saved uh, is washed away, and then as a Christian, you're not going to go to hell for sinning. You're not going to lose your salvation for sinning. But we still have to answer for our works before God to get our rewards. And we're still going to have to answer for our sins in the sense that our sins are going to be made known. Everything we thought was in secret is our Christian life or Christian walk. Everything we thought was done in secret, God's going to reveal to us and some people believe to everybody. So... Um,
God winked at, but now commendeth all men everywhere to repent. Okay, if you're making false, if you're making any image of things in heaven, image of God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, throw those things away, burn them, and repent. David Daniels needs to repent. Okay, for making false images of the Godhead. This book. It's funny because um, there's people who actually do videos on, you know, Bible conversions, and it's this stuff is what gets people. Oh, it just looks so nice. Look how shiny it is, and look at that, all the art and everything, and it's got all these pictures of art in there and everything. It's got to be good. I'm going to be burning this book. So I remember Brother Brian over at King James Video Ministries, he's like, how to burn them really good. He was drilling holes. And with this being as thick as it is, I'm going to have to do the same thing. Um, I just feel bad because the words seem like they're actually King James Bible words. But they've tainted the book and perverted it and made it so satanic. Um, another thing God put on my heart real quick. I do not hate David Daniels and I'm not attacking the man David Daniels. Okay, I am rebuking him and correcting him according to scripture and I did that already and he rejects it he rejects the word so he can have his images his I mean two publications basically based around images and pictures they're chick tracks if you have a chick track that just has the simple gospel on it that's just horrible you need it you need a gospel not chick track if you have a gospel track that just simply has the gospel on it that's just horrible it won't work it's just it's just so outdated. You need to have a chick track where we have pictures. And when you do a lot of pictures, you can actually brainwash people and lead them falsely in the wrong direction with images. So, like, the best example is the Trinity. Those images that they create are leading people falsely in the wrong direction to worship lowercase g gods, false gods. Um, so... That's it for this video. Um, I hope this showed some stuff. You can make some comments if you want to add to it. Um, just, you know, repent about the making, um, you need to repent about the Trinity. I've already done videos on that. But you need to repent about making images. And like I said, this book is horrible. I'll be burning it. But I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. And